guys i am doing so well with my numbers fast it is not even funny five dislikes a part of being obsessed with big numbers is wanting everyone to like you i'm going to revert now to luke 19 where jesus meets zacchaeus he calls him by name and says, Quick, come down, I must be a guest in your house today. And Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. People played a big role in the government at that time. It was through the fear of getting the displeasure of people that Pilate handed over Jesus to be crucified. Jesus, though, when he had to please God, he did not care who else was upset. Jesus was able to keep his mind on his mission and who he was and what he had come to do. And I'm going to talk about how that helped him not care about pleasing people. He was aware the world would hate him. He expected it. He prepared for it. And when the time came, he lived through it. And when he went enthusiastically to Zacchaeus' house, when everyone was displeased, Zacchaeus was feeling so special and honored that in a few minutes he completely changed and became a totally different man. Lord, I will give half my will to the poor and if I've cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Now, you can do the math and calculate that. If he's cheated a lot of people and he gives them back four times as much and he's giving half his will to the poor, which is a separate thing, he might not end up with anything. But suddenly that did not matter anymore to him because Jesus would rather get the displeasure of all that crowd than to ignore Zacchaeus and pass him by. If Jesus had taken the effort to, you know, be amazing but still kind of pacify the people, keep them happy, this would have never happened. In verse 9, Jesus says, Salvation has come to this house today, but this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Can you imagine? Jesus goes so far as to tell the Pharisees, the people who are probably legally the sons of Abraham, tells them, y'all are not the sons of Abraham because faith is what makes you a son of Abraham. But to this enemy of theirs, this person who has cheated people time and time and again, he is very rich because of it. To him, he goes to his house and goes and spends time with him and calls him the true son of Abraham. Yeah, this camera is shaking. <laughs> what you probably want to know now is how do we take this information and help us not be people pleasing? Well, there are a lot of clues in verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost and we are going to break it down right now first thing is the phrase son of man you have to know who you are you are a child of the living god and then you have to know who your god is your god is the loving father but that does not mean he cannot throw your soul in hell and face it no person has that power except him the second part is the word came you've got to know your origin and your destination we have come from god and we are going to God to meet him on Judgment Day. Remember who your God is. If you're finally going to meet God at the end of your life, would you really want him to be the only one who was displeased by everything that you did in your life? This is the one that matters. The third thing is the phrase, to seek. Jesus was in a big crowd. People were all around him, but he did not get carried away. He came looking for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was up sitting in a tree trying to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Jesus looked up, away from the crowd, saw him, found his last sheep in a tree. The fourth thing is the phrase, and save. Jesus didn't just look at Zacchaeus and smile. No, he gave up all the other people to be with this boy and to be with him in private. His love for Zacchaeus was enough for Zac to completely renounce everything he had So much noise, it just makes me mad. <sighs> you know, we are living in a city of big numbers and anyone in India knows that we have to, if we want some to get somewhere big, we have to have good connections. And Jesus was in a crowd who, many of whom probably would have, you know, been able to help him, maybe financially or help him reach, you know, other cities or places, help his disciples. They could have said, we'll give a lot of money to the poor children or we'll build homes, blah, 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 blah. Jesus didn't care. Jesus came for Zacchaeus. 
and to Zacchaeus he went. His love for Zacchaeus was enough for Zac to completely renounce everything that he'd built for himself for so many years. The fifth thing is the phrase, those who are lost. And I'm gonna break that down too. Those. Those is a group. It's not everyone. Who are. It's present. It's current. It's urgent. Lost. They're not among the other people. Zacchaeus was so short he couldn't see above the crowd and that's why he was sitting in a tree. He wasn't talking to him, no one was talking to him, no one was willing to help him out. He already knew that because everyone despised him and they called him a notorious sinner. I mean, that's a really bad title. But all these things qualified him to be found and found by Jesus Christ himself. This was the target audience of Jesus. People like Zacchaeus, the lost people. You may be lost today in a relationship. Maybe you knew someone who you don't know anymore and now you don't even know yourself. Jesus wants you. He wants to come to your home and be your honored guest. He's not doing it for publicity. It's not a hoax or a scam. In fact, he lost his life because he thought you were worth it. He came back to life and broke the power of death because he didn't want you to lose your soul. And you know what? You don't need to find yourself. You just need to allow Jesus to find you. Invite him in and you'll be surprised at the person he will reveal you to be. We please God, we will displease a lot of people. Jesus himself did it and he was the most loving, beautiful soul that there ever was on this planet. So if he could displease people, we are not in a pleasant situation. But we got to know who we are, who our God is, why we've come, where we're going, what we need to look for, what we need to do, and who we need to go to. And if we please God, we will prove ourselves to be a true son, a true daughter of Abraham, also true son and true daughter of the Most High King. And come on, which is better? To win the whole world or to win your own soul? Let that soak in a little bit. This is Vihan Maris on Serious Sundays, signing off. Very serious indeed.